In a 52 to 9 vote, the Colorado House voted to expel Representative Steve Lebsack last Friday. The first expulsion in over 100 years came after a sexual harassment investigation confirming 11 incidents involving the former state lawmaker. Lebsack changed party affiliations right before the vote, and the Colorado Republican Party announced on Friday morning that it will indeed form a committee to replace Lebsack. David, uh, first of all, we, we were uh, late to the news only because we taped last week at 1215 and they didn't decide this until after a marathon uh, hearing last Friday until late afternoon, four or five o'clock. Now that we know for sure that he has been expelled and this whole surprise last minute change of party, uh, what are your thoughts about the whole thing and especially how the Republicans have announced today how they're handling it? Well, like, like many things in the legislature, you can find it all in my dad's book, Rules for State Legislators, available on Amazon, introduction by Representative Diana DeGette. And in it, he asks the question, what is the difference between the legislature and a small town? And the answer is, there is no difference. He says the legislature, the only experience he ever had in his life of being so much on top of people all the time, day after day, and you, you see them more than, than you see your family uh, often during the session, was when he was in basic training in the Army at, at Fort Belvoir. So the expulsion vote was very much a decision of a jury of Leb Sox peers in that little small town they live in. They know each other very well, and you know, as in basic training, it's kind of hard to hide your, your character ultimately. Now, what the standards are for expulsion and what the burden of proof was, the state constitution has some general phrases, but how you apply them to this case, I think there was a lot of room for individual legislators to make different decisions. And I, I respect all the legislators because I think they took into account what evidence was available to them and applied that to, to how they understood the constitutional rule. Penn, you are a former state lawmaker. We put that in your introduction in every show. What did you think of what went down and what we learned today from the GOP? You know, in, in terms of what went down, I actually went to the proceedings last Friday and sat up in the gallery for a couple of hours. I intentionally did not want to exercise floor privileges. I sat up in the gallery in the crowd because I wanted to get a, a different sense of it. Uh, you know, on the one hand, what part of the problem is Steve Lebsack is not a very sympathetic individual um, and, and it, sometimes how you treat people is more important than what you do and his behavior in general was problematic but uh, when I at the start I I didn't think they had 44 votes to expel as the day wore on it's clear that some people just wore out and decided what the heck let's vote them out of here but but a number of legislators raised some very good points that I think the General Assembly is going to have to be mindful of going forward. Number one, in the introduction to this topic, the term that we used in the intro is confirming 11 instances. No, the problem with the whole investigation, such as it was, is the investigator said it is more likely than not good that point. these things happen. That's like flipping a coin. It's not a legal standard that would prevail either preponderance or a reasonable doubt. And so, Unfortunately, because of Steve's issues, he couldn't very well make that case, but other legislators did. Um, and I respect the decision they all had to make, but a number of legislators said, you know what, maybe censure, but this is an elected official who is one of our peers. We're not the, the manager firing a subordinate. Maybe expulsion is a step too far. Maybe we ought to censure the guy so that the general public knows we don't contone this behavior, which is clearly out of bounds but maybe expulsion was a step too far. A and I think what happened is the weight of the emotion in the debate swayed some people, they voted to, to put him out, and then his last minute change of party was, like I said, he's a problematic individual and he's done generally a lot of sympathy. It, it definitely played out like a, a really good telenovela, just minus the subtitles. It was very interesting. Joey, what have you heard over the week? I mean, we, it's been a full week since it happened. Uh, while the GOP announcement that they will fill the seat came today, uh, the reaction, we've been able to get a whole week of how it's gone down. What have you heard? Well, this is a political process. The announcement that we heard today that the Republicans will fill the seat, that's a political decision. The decision they made last Friday was a political decision. The, uh, and I agree with Pinfield. I didn't think they had the vote when the, uh, when the day started. But it wasn't the he said, she said parts of this that sank. Uh, Steve Lebsack, it was the retaliation. You know, the first day of the session, or the day before the session, he sends out this 28-page memo criticizing his accusers by name and with some of the personal things that they had told him. It really rubbed people the wrong way. And uh, Representative Cole Wiss, the Assistant House Minority Leader, gets up and says, 
we can't we can't tolerate that. You know, we don't know if these accusations are true, but we only have to look in our inbox to see what what Steve what Steve did. Um, you know, we've got this isn't over yet. We've got three Republicans accused in the Senate, and we're going to Democrats now want Republicans to play by the state same standards and uh, move to expel Senator Randy Baumgartner. But you know. Lepsock's an outlier on this. The number of women, the number of accusations, the way he acted afterwards, he made this decision very easy for them. You know, whether it's a court of law or a court of public opinion, Steve Lepsock had a fool for a client. <laughs> You're on fire today, Joey. Well done. Uh, Gabriel sets me up. <laughs> <laughs> Patty, uh, you have not only a reaction to what we saw uh, yet the last week, but then also uh, the heat or if, if if there is heat placed on the Senate now to act on uh, what's going on over there. Your thoughts? Well, there definitely is heat if it's not going to be a double standard because certainly Republicans were happy to vote to vote Lepsack out. Let's see, I was very wrong because I think I said at this time last Friday that he wouldn't be voted out because of the reasons that both Joey and Penn have talked about, which is that whole more likely than not, that is not a legal standard. And we're not talking about the legislature being his employer, the people are his employer. So yes, in, a, in an employment situation, someone who behaved like this would probably lose their job. You would hope they would lose their job. But that's up to the people. If you can't not vote for him the next time, you recall him. You do something. You shun him as much as you can. You censor him. Uh, I think the retaliation issues, I mean, he certainly showed just what kind of person he was, criminally stupid if not an actual criminal by what he did, but Grantham is not going to be able to push it off to say we've got to go do criminal investigations because these, these actions are not crimes, they are just bad behavior.